So we have a chink in the blue sky. Uh, we are, I think, Monday morning now. I'm losing track of the weeks at the moment. Everything's going so quick. So last night, I came down from the house to close my shed door because I actually left it open. And uh, the bees were flying really well yesterday. So I came down and it was really quiet. And all I could hear was this like whoosh, humming noise. And I realized what it was and I wasn't expecting it. Well, these bees were drying nectar. Not surprising really because we've got loads of rapeseed there and loads of rapeseed there but i uh, haven't got supers on yet and they're not ready for supers yet and i'll show you why in a minute because i'm going to go into these hives but the wonderful thing to me was we've had that very brief few hours where the bees were able to extract some nectar from those flowers now it doesn't mean much but it means that all the rest of my nukes and all the probably all the bees that are on these type of flowers at the moment would have been able to bring in some nectar, which means that if we have a cold snap, which we're gonna have, looks like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, not cold, cold, but down to single figures in the day as a maximum and at night probably frost, it means that there's some nectar gone into those hives and it will be going in today and tomorrow as well. So it won't be enormous, but what it will mean is if there's a little bit extra in that's gone in naturally, First of all, it's going to stimulate that queen to lay even more. And secondly, before I get stung, it's probably going to give a little bit of a reserve around that brood nest and around where those young bees are developing. So this is exactly what we can get sometimes. It's very rare. Usually we don't see any nectar at all into the hives until uh, usually I'd say mid-April is the average time. So what you'll see is we've talked about how do you know a flow is on. The other thing I didn't mention, I've talked about them building loads of white comb, that there's a, a complete passage going backwards and forwards, a, a very hurried procession. Um, and you'll see the colonies become very compact very quickly. And you'll see backfilling of the brood nest when there's a big flow on, usually later in that flow, as bees start to prepare for swarming. That's one of the pre-signs as well. And that's what we want to try and avoid as beekeepers is that brood nest filling up with nectar. You will also see the front landing strip here full of humidity. So basically this part here, these, these I, I have these front grills on still, they're gonna come off soon anyway, but they, bees can get underneath there. So there's plenty of room, but it just gives a bit more security. But long story short, um, you'll see this is be all wet at night and you'll hear the noise of them drying the honey. And that's what they're doing. They're basically circulating air in the hive, fanning their wings inside, and you will hear that noise. And that is, the genuine sign there is a flow on, or there is the start of a flow, or if something happened in the colony, like you fed it some really liquid syrup and they're trying to dry off it. But if you put two and two together and you look at the, that big yellow stuff over there and that big yellow stuff over there, it's pretty logical that we just reach that temperature where the bees could extract some nectar. I mean, okay, so this is confession time as well. Last week when I was telling everyone to watch out for starved colonies, this colony here, of the two, that one on top of the pallet, virtually starved to death. Now I caught it as there was a few bees falling out the front. So what did I do? I immediately went in and I gave that colony some syrup. But when I did, when I said gave it syrup, what I did was I actually literally trickled syrup over the re over the seams of virtually motionless bees. And the amazing thing was within three hours, almost 80 to 70 to 80 percent of that colony had revived. The queen's still in there. I then fed them syrup again a couple of hours later, and then I gave them fondant, which I know they've taken down because they're flying well. They've lost a lot of the bees, maybe said 30 percent of their workers. By the end of the day, they're recovering. So what I could do now is next to it, I have a really strong colony of bees. 
So what I could do today is I could take out a frame of bees and brood, probably just brood. I'll find emerging brood and give it to that colony to give it a boost. That's exactly what you can do when you have a problem. But we'll have a look at that colony and see how it's doing since it was nearly um, dead, but it should have revived. They've taken good um, sugar down. They've had syrup initially. That's what the can, the bucket's there for. But, and then they've had a fondant which had vitamins in it, extra strong fondant to give them everything I need to just hope get that process going. But what they really needed more than anything else was um, was just sugars and they've got it now. But it just shows you how quickly a colony can crash. So that's my confession. And this is just one of them here, but the other colonies I've got, I've, needs I've got are more likely to have better syrup supplies or better stores in their colonies because that was a late one I did and I didn't feed it that much. So, but you can just see this activity here. It's absolutely incredible. And I think there's a bit of nectar coming in today. It's not that warm at the moment, but what we're seeing here is a lot of, a lot less pollen than the norm. And we're seeing much, much more bees coming in without anything apparently on them. And what that would indicate to me is that it's, before I get stung on the face, um, but what that would indicate to me is that, <coughs> I always get too close. What that would indicate to me is that the bees are turning more to nectar when they can and bringing that in. So I think we've got a good nectar flow on and it obviously is going to start now. There's a bee sting, I didn't get out. It's obviously going to start now. I'm going to go in my shed because I've got a bee tracking me. Go away. Put my suit on, which is the advisable thing to do. So we're going to have a look in these colonies in a minute. That was my fault for getting too close. Remember bees. If you do mess around with the front of the hive, you're going to get stung. But let's get the suit on and get in there with the smoker and just give them a little bit of a look over, see what they're up to. So, here we are. Bee -bee beekeeping back at home. Good to have the old smokity dokity going. Let's give these colonies a quick little look over. See what we can find out from them. A little bit of smoke. I don't really want to disturb them much. I'm going to have to smoke them a bit just so I can work them. It's not that actually that warm today. The sun has kind of gone back in a bit. Hopefully you guys can see this colony. I'm going to work it from the side. Let's see how this is doing. If I find it's very dry and light, I have got spare my goodness me these are going to need to super pretty quick mind you i've still got the partitions in here so this is why this is such a good colony and it's exactly why i'm in here today so maybe you can see that pretty well yeah so we've got a frame of uh foundation which i believe they're starting to build partition and a partition in number one so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten Okay, number, sorry, I was saying that's the foundation there, the partition is, is there and in that one. So we're going to give this a light smoke. I'm right in the middle of the bees. I'm actually going to go around the back of this colony just to make it easier for the bees so they can carry on working, which is what we always try and do. So I'm this side now. So first colony of the year, pretty good start. I'm very pleased to see this. So let's take this partition out carefully because this is what they're going to just chew on. They're starting to chew it up now. I have painted this, but because they know they're going to run out of room. And we've got drones here, which is a good sign. Where did I just see a drone? There we go. There's a drone. Good to see them boys. Let's take that off. Let's have a look at this frame. Start from the outside, work our way in. That's what I generally do in most cases. This is a, a, a quick inspection. I'm not looking terribly hard, but I am going to pull frames out. Have a look on the outside. My goodness me, we've got drone brood here. And my goodness me, is that starting to sign of swarm cells? Whoops, this is crazy. Blimey, I knew this colony was strong, but for the first outside frame, look at that, that whole thing is full of eggs and larvae and brood. This is my strongest colony here. But, uh, and look at that pollen. I told you I'm bringing in pollen here for ages. This is very scary. I need to get supers on this 
soon, if not this week, if not next. But it is right next to a huge amount of very, very, very good colonies. Looks like a brood nest there with nectar in it. This is just ridiculous. Look at that pollen around the outside. Crazy, crazy frames. I never expected to see this. Although I can take a frame out of here or two and put it in the colony next door and we'll do a bit of knocking down like that because I think it's the best thing to do. Frames of brood. Look at that. So this colony is building up really well for the spring already. This is gonna have a whack of bees that are gonna hatch out. Look at the pollen there on that corner. It's gonna have a whack of bees that are gonna hatch out really quickly. I'm not really looking for the queen, but I know she's here. So there she is, she's not marked. She was an F1 last year. You can see her there. She's doing a pretty good job. Frames of brood, blah, blah, blah. No new wax really though. So that's, you can see this has just done well on what it's had in stores. So um, it was a big colony, overwintered well. This needs immediate space. Nice frame of that biscuity type brood that we like to see. Brood on six for seven frames there eight frames so far it will be by the time we finished i'm sure this is just amazing looks like a bit of a queen cell cup starting there drone larvae drone in this exactly right part of the colony i'd expect i'm going to leave them build that so we've got one more frame, then we've got some partition, a partition. As I say, this is the strongest colony I've got here, but this is way stronger than I ever expected. This is just heavy with nectar. So this frame, I'm going to remember where it is and probably give that to another colony if it's, if it's one that's light. But I'm also going to take out this sort this problem out this is the partition that i haven't gotten early enough so they've removed some of this some of my pit partitions were crap anyway but they've removed the wet the, they've been chewing on the foam and they've rebuilt inside this is way more advanced than i ever thought ridiculously too advanced that's just a disgrace you know what they are doing is they're building this frame so this frame here, they're starting to build out as well, which is great. This is what that frame is for. This is telling me that the bees are looking for space and they've got it now. Get that bit of burr comb off because that was joined to the other bit. So I'm going to get two more frames as this is a frame of nectar as well and no eggs in that yet. I'm going to put this in the number, number one or number 10 spot, put that right to the back, move the other frame forward this side and then give them another frame near the broodness so they can build on these bees are actually being really nice okay let's have a look at that so that hasn't got any brood just that drone brood which we're after drone comb which you know what i'm actually going to just cut that out for now because it's only early in the year and hopefully they'll backfill it with with some better shaped drone comb there and i'm going to put a new frame in here when I say new frame, I'm going to put a frame of drawn comb because I've got that, okay? So I'm going to run off and get that now. I'm going to put that drone comb in there. Hope you can see that. So these three frames, they're not positioning. I've got to just realise I've got to reposition that, that last two correctly. But we've got no eggs in these. So this is where the egg starts. I'm going to put an extra frame of drawn comb here. Give the queen room to lay. They can build out those two as well in this light flow. And then... I can then rearrange these and put an extra frame probably in that one or two of those. I think the brood starts in the second frame this end. So I'm going to go and get another frame. We'll put that in. So I've got my two frames here. These are a little bit built from last year. 
So I'm just going to reposition this frame again because I didn't get this in where I should have done and the one before because I'm yapping and not concentrating. So and there's people going to me, oh, you should put a super on this colony. I imagine there would be. And yes, but we're looking at the forecast. It's still only mid-March. We're looking at the forecast. If I put a super on this, they're probably not going to go into it because I've given them space. So in goes this space next to the brood nest, not in the brood nest. It's way too early to be dividing up the brood nest. So they've got space to build now. They've got plenty of stores in the frames. We know the queen, I think, was on this one. Look at the amount of bees that have moved across to keep that brood warm. Let's put that back in there carefully. Yes, we have castellations in all Dadent hives, okay? So, um, we obviously have a different way of managing the frames as we lift them in and out. So we have to be a bit more careful. We can't slide them out. That's got brood as well. I can't break that. And I wouldn't want to this time of year. But loads of stores. I don't know if you can see those stores in there. The top left-hand corner here, or oh, it's your bottom right. Um, nectar everywhere. So this is what I was hoping to see, but I was not expecting to see such large quantity. So this will be some drone as well on this frame. There's the drone there. So this is exactly where you'd expect to see it. Generally, you'll see the drone about on sometimes on both sides of the nest, but more often one than the other. But you'll see it on the second or the third frame in usually. So you can put a drone comb in to be built and laid up in the middle and the queen will do that. But then you need to really move it to the outside of the colony and put a frame of or just a plain frame anyway. But if you put any, any frame in the colony this time of year, they're gonna build drone comb if you cut the bottom of a frame off or if you do not give them worker, worker comb to build. They will just build drone. They always build a load this time of year. So there we go, we've got one more space and that's where this one's gonna go into here. So they've got space to build that now. This colony is fine for another week. And that's about when I was going to add supers anyway. And because this is probably the biggest colony I've got anyway in the whole of the apiary, I'm a bit annoyed that it's so strong. But I'm not because what I'm saying, what I'm seeing is nectar that has come in. Very happy with that. And these bees are doing absolutely great. Not stressed at all, really. Very good colony. And they're going to be super productive, I predict, over the next few weeks and months. They will be divided as well. I'm going to bear in mind, if I need a frame of brood for the colony I'm going to film in a minute, I can give it. So let's do look at this colony just next door here. So that's the colony we've just looked at. That's the colony that I gave emergency feed to. So I put the front on to give them more um, protection from being robbed out last week because there was a little bit of robbing going on because it was just so cold, so that was good. But I inverted a cover, and I haven't looked underneath still, but look, there we go. There's the box. There they are. They're doing fine. They've eaten all the fondant. We're going to have a quick look and see what they found, see what they've got inside them. I'm going to try and show you here with the camera on board. This is empty. I might even give them some more fondant just to keep building them up. So that worked. Let's have a look at some of the frames. Let's give them a little bit of smoke to clear the smoke, clear the smoke off, clear the bees off, I should say. I'm gonna put the camera here for now and I can lift out a few frames and show you what I'm seeing. The outer frames are much, much less. And they've cleared out the dead bees. The majority have gone even though I did clear a lot from the bottom. So here we have a frame here, just bees and nectar. So they must have brought that in because that was not in the colony before. So this is good. This makes me very happy. There's a lot of dead bees in the bottom still. So I'm gonna take the opportunity to brush most of those out while I can to get them out of the way. I'll show you them in a minute. But I just want to see how these frames are doing. They're a little bit light, these frames, but they got, look at that brood. Mm -hmm. They have got a nice lot of brood in the middle, some white brood there glistening. You can see a whole middle bit relayed. So this colony is going to recover really well. Eggs everywhere. 
So it's just, there's a queen. She's not marked either. There she goes. So she looks good now. The difference in a colony in a week since she's been revived is just incredible. So I'm gonna take out a couple of these empty frames which will give me a bit of room to just brush these bees out that are on the floor. I'll show you. This is what a dead out looks like after it's recovered. There's good brood there. There's a queen on here. There's eggs everywhere. So I would say this one will make a full recovery, but I cannot give it a full frame of brood yet because I don't think there's really enough bees to warrant giving it a frame of a whole frame yet to boost this colony. I would love to, but I just don't think it's worth the risk. I'd rather just let them get on and then they can recover well in their own time. Just get these stinky dead bees out. And this is going to make the colony fresher, lighter, cleaner, more able to move on quicker. I'm glad to get them out. I'm going to put this queen back in. There she is on the frame. She'll go back in now. And back in can go the frames. Yeah, I honestly don't think that there's a point in giving that a huge amount of bees at the moment because it's a little bit smaller, but judging by that brood and everything, I think they will recover pretty quick. So I'm just going to leave them for now. When I come to put the supers on next week, if that brood I've seen that's, that's in, in catch has hatched well, or then I consider giving them a, a frame from another colony. I just don't think it's, it's that good or strong enough yet to the risk of doing that. But I'm very pleased to see this. This is full of nectar. Exactly what I wanted to see from a recovered colony. So it's good news. I'm going to put this one further forward. I'm going to put this one further back because they've got stores. They've got, I know they can heat themselves now. That's so great. Let's clear those last dead, dead bees from underneath. And now they've got a nice clean base and they're just going to get on with being bees. But you can see now what I'm on about when this thing happens. There's a nice lot of bees here flying. They've got brood. They're recovering really well and really quickly. I, I could have given them a frame from there, to be honest, but you know what? I just think that they're all doing fine. And so when I come to assess this one for its super in another week's time or less, I'll probably take some brood out then because they would have had time to build those outer ones. It's very easy. And in my experience, it's so easy to be overexcited this time of year and start chucking on supers. There's two reasons why we don't do that. One, you saw there's three frames still to build on this side and two the other. Now that we've had that reconfiguration and the queen's back in there and all the bees are flying back in and starting to forage again, they'll soon realize they've got plenty of room to build. And with the, with the cold nights coming up at the end of the week, this is the time you really need to be sure that you don't overdo things because you can chill a colony so quickly this time of year. And it's just literally a matter of waiting. Everything will come. You will have your chance for your nectar. And we also, for the third thing, we don't like putting our supers here on too quick because if you do, you've only got four to five weeks, not 45 weeks, four to five weeks before you must pull your supers and get that extracted. Otherwise your honey will crystallize. So that's done, good. That's done, good. I'm gonna leave these till last because these are absolute bitches. This was a swarm that landed in my house or in my front garden in a mini plus last summer. I thought it'd come from the bottom of the garden, but it hadn't. It had come from the woods far, far, far away. And they are just atrocious, but they're doing well. So I'm gonna leave them for now. I know they're not enormous, so they can be left. I'm gonna look at these colonies up here before we go over to there afterwards. Way smaller, six frames at the most. So I'll have a quick look in here and see what we've got, but there's plenty of bees. I've just smoked them down a little bit, but this is exactly what I'd expected to find. But I'm also gonna re-centralize these and move them to the middle of the colony. And hopefully that will give them a little bit more um, space, both sides rather than just one side. Let's take a frame out from the outside here. Nice clean frames, no mould on it, which is good to see. Don't think it's a terrifically big colony, this. There's no partition in this one. 
We'll just, oh, there's honey though, that's good to see. Look, plenty of honey there on that frame, so they got plenty of food. So we'll move this one over, centralize this nest, see what the queen is doing. It wasn't a very strong colony last year, but there is pollen. I think that we'll see brood on the next one. Uh, nope. Looks like maybe eggs, but this, this is the pollen frame before the eggs start. But they've got, the main thing is I'm assessing that brood, that's nectar feed and they've got plenty of nectar. Ooh, this could be a quick, no, this is a queen right colony. There's eggs, but just not a lot of brood. I don't think this is a very well mated queen. I'll we'll have to watch this one. Some old cups there they used for super seizure last year that I didn't get out. Wax is hard. So I don't know whether this is a very viable colony. Let's have a look. No, she's a drone layer. Virtually a drone layer. So we've got a mix. This is an interesting colony. This is what you might find in some colonies in the spring. This looks to me as though it's a bit drony, and I don't think she's laying very well. She obviously didn't make that well. This was a super procedure from a really good breeder queen last year that caught me unawares. She's laid up that part really well, but, and there's eggs in right the way through this part. All I can do is see what happens, but it's unlikely she'll make a good queen this year or become a good queen. Let's look at the next frame. Hardly any eggs and larvae on the outside, and on the inside she has laid eggs, but not a great deal. So this isn't, to me, a very good colony. I don't think it's going to do well. All I can do now is close this up and let and see what happens in a few weeks. If not, I'm going to pinch her and maybe give it and give it a frame of eggs and larvae. And when there's more, when there's more bees around, sorry, more drones around, say in about three or four weeks, hopefully they'll make a new queen if I give them a frame of eggs, a decent queen. So what, what I would do is I would come back to this colony after pinching the queen, wait about a week, go in, destroy any queen cells that they tried to make, which would probably be crap, and then see if, and then give them a frame of bees and brood and larvae. So there's hatching larvae that continues. So unfortunately, as much as I had high hopes for this F1, it's a pile of crap. To be honest, and we recentralize that. There's plenty of bees there for now, so I just hope that we can keep those bees strong, and um, we'll be able to get a new queen into this one fairly soon. But that is beekeeping, as we say. These are really nice genetics. I'm not going to use a lot of smoke if I don't have to. Excuse the angle of the camera while I give this a quick look. I did give this some fondant uh, about five weeks ago because I was worried about them. I just put it on top underneath the box. So you may have started to build up there, I don't know. So I'm gonna have a little look here and see what we can see. There's a lot of bees in this colony, so I'm very hopeful this is a good colony. Look at that, my word. way too many bees but they built up the top and they haven't built all the frames out but that's a good thing so what i'm going to do is i'm going to remove this comb here gently with a little bit of smoke and then i'm going to jiggle the frames around to give them i'll just show you this You can see now that we have comb built, some lovely looking bees here. They've raised drone comb there. I don't have a problem with this, and I know it blocks up the feeder, but it's a good scenario to have, you know? It's much better to have this than no brood and a crappy, weak little colony. So I'm gonna shake those bees off there. 
there's nectar in all of this, which is good to see. And all I did was give them some fondant a while back. So this is definitely not fondant. This is nectar. That's all full of nectar there by the look of it. So I'm pretty happy with that. In fact, I'm very happy. Let's just take this one out. Give them that space they so richly deserve. No partition eating on this one. Look at that. That's just honey there. So that's got to be moved. We don't want that in the way at the moment. We'll have a look at that frame. Are they preparing this to be laid into? No. No, that's just a block of resources. So that can go at the back. And we've got plenty of other nectar and stores in the colony. So I'm going to hold the phone while I do this, just so you can see that I'm going to put this at the back for now, because that's what I often do. And we'll put the space a little bit closer to the brood nest, but not in the brood nest. Remember, it's still way too cold for that. So we're going to put a frame in there, but I believe this frame is probably the pollen frame where they've been building and they've been feeding bees from, but only what she's been laying into recently, like much lighter. Oh no, she's laid this up, so that's good. And if you can see that, I'll try and tilt it. You can probably just see that glistening larvae all over that frame. Absolutely beautiful. Little bit of drone there. Lovely frame. That's just really all I need to see this side. And look at that brood there. I mean, so we know this colony is going to explode. Oh, there's the queen down there. You can just see her on the right hand side at the bottom there. I just caught a, picture, a little view of her. So this is going to go back where it was and I'm going to put a drawn comb in here because I've got drawn comb. I'm going to take out this partition. So for the moment we know where the queen is. We can pretty much relax with that. Let's have a look at what this frame is doing. They're loading that up, but it's just full of nectar. So this one goes at the back and I'm going to get two frames of foundation or what, sorry, one frame of drawn and one frame of foundation. So really, apart, there's like five frames of brood, or four, four and a half, five frames of brood, but the, the outside ones have still got to be built yet, so that's great. So they've got room, but they've also got a massive workforce with nectar, which is brilliant. So let's go and get some frames, stick them in, and this one is done. These colonies are a fraction of what they were 20 minutes ago. They all came out, did a lot of exercise. You can see there's the same old thing in the front of, like I mentioned before, is bees that have got pollen that they're just a bit slow getting back into the colony. And the majority are back in though. I'll have a look at all these three boxes, four boxes here, I should say. And I think these will be a lot stronger. Let's see what we got. There's a box of bees. So I inverted this feeder as well. So it's time to just revert this back as well. I think they built comb under here actually as well. Yep, they have. I mean, look at that. What a waste of technically of resources, but it's not. So they haven't built that elsewhere in the colony. I can give them more, um, I can give them more Space to build into the frames and then well, they are a good colony very look at that nectar literally you see that that's when you know you've got a nectar flow running look this is just from the top it's just pouring out it's just loose nectar which me makes me very happy So, I can see already brood, 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 bees there. So we've got bees there, just starting on this one. That partition here has got to come out. Not many bees on that, that's fine though. And we're going to look at this one for stores, the outer frame, the second one in, number two. And there's, already, there's even stores in that one. So this, bit, this colony does not need any feed. That can go in number one. Let's see where the brood starts. So we can advance that and give space. There's the pollen frame, I think, and there's the start of the brood. Let's have a look here. 
much lighter frame full of eggs and larvae look at that lovely so very pleased with this as well nice looking good not ready for a super yet though nearly but not ready there's a lot of bees in that top box there they'll go back down let's have a look at the other side nice clean frame there and use that again there's only one partition in this colony so i don't need to do anything else there's nectar there i can go to the back pollen that's the pollen frame where the brood starts nice this brood is quite sheet like very nice i like this colony not aggressive and plenty of brood look at this nice this will be very strong very quickly i think plenty of bees look at that Woohoo! nice plenty of brood that whole frame is not going to hatch out at the same time but Oh, look at this nectar, look. Can you see that dripping out? So I don't have to feed any of these colonies. I'm not going to look for the queen. I found what I needed to. <laughs> I know there's nectar coming in. It's all a bit of a nightmare. But this can go here, right next to the brood, because it's a drawn comb already, and there's loads of bees in this colony to keep that warm. So I'm going to go and grab a comb of foundation there. They can build there this one is done as well so we're going to do the same thing as i did before we're going to just make sure there's no sticky up burr comb here smoke the bees down and i'm going to put the feeder back on and the bees will make their way down and maybe they won't finish building that comb so much in the top if i'll come back next week and probably dig that out once they've just calmed down a bit in that top part they may do they may not When you invert your inner covers, like this is my first inspection since the winter, and I knew they had feed, but I'm happy to leave that because I believe that if there's food there and they put it up there and it's in the feeder, you know what? It certainly isn't the end of the world. A lot of bees in these colonies. So I'm gonna do the next one now, and the next three, and see how we get on. Right, so we have done the inspection on these four as well that's finished those three very good this one very good but just not quite as strong as that one and i can tell you why it's probably because the sun comes around and hits this one last maybe so that is really to me a good indication of what i'm seeing now this is absolutely classic for this time of year so let me just have a little bit of chat about that. This is how I feel about it. I'm not saying I'm right, but all these people who say, oh, your bees are rubbish, they swarm all the time. Not that they do say that, but the reason why people get all upset about swarming is I think it's not because of genetic in the vast majority of cases. I believe that a lot of it comes down to managing the brood nest. And if you get a flow that goes from nothing to incredibly strong in a matter of a week in early in the year when the bees aren't ready that's the early drive for swarming i just think that suddenly the bees don't have developed colonies and they're having to deal with a huge amount of nectar coming in and they don't know what to do with it because there's not the different types of bees in the colony that in the summer and later in the spring when they normally manage that nectar in a much more appropriate way in other words the distribution is much better because there's more bees and there's a better passing around of nectar and it's distributed in the right place the brood is left for brood and they're not just throwing it wherever they can find then off out for the next load as we're seeing at the moment because what we're seeing now is instant instant gratification by that yellow stuff which is great so the, as far as the beekeeper goes in in sort of um in the first kind of instance you're like oh thank goodness we've got nectar but then you're realizing that it's like way too much nectar too soon and the colonies aren't ready all they're doing is just 
just coming out of the winter, starting to put good brood on. The brood hasn't really hatched yet. There's not that big, um, larger amount of nurse bees in the colony. And Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt. Swarming preparations in strong colonies are already underway even before the first flowers have really got going. Because what we're seeing over there, that's not the first flowers. That is, an, that is a farmer's crop that is artificially brought on early. The other stuff like hawthorn, like blackthorn, like cherries, like apples, like pears, all those other things. And not to mention numerous garden plants, chestnut, it's all still completely dormant. It's way, way off flowering. And I think that is the real reason why we're seeing a lot of swarming early now is because of this stuff that is just way too strong for the bees to cope with at that time. I mean, the daffodils are, you know, still out. <laughs> you know what I mean? You, you've got to look at this objectively and you and it's great to discuss this with other people and I have this debate and I speak to beekeepers in Holland who spend years perfecting breeding these um, super queens you know and and they're adamant that their bees don't swarm and I, I would like challenge them to say we'll bring them over here in our rape because we cannot go here more than 500 meters without being in rapeseed in the whole of Brittany basically so my bees are being thrust into this literally overpowering um, soup of nectar that they just can't cope with. And it just keep bringing it in because they spent the whole winter. They're still in the foraging mode for the winter. They're still in, well, let's get what we can. We've got to keep building. And they just clog up that broodness before the colony is actually ready to deal with it. So once you get that, you can try to do something about it by, making a split from the colony when the colony is strong enough and it does delay swarming. They will still try afterwards. But uh, you know, a lot of my queens are from Tenuta Retiro in Italy that I bought last year. I also made a load that I grafted from them. So my genetics are generally good. Um, they're not a swarmy genetic, but put them here. You know, it is what it is and we just deal with it the best we can. So a little bit of a look into my hives you've had a chance to see what my bees are doing. I've had a chance to see what they're doing. To summarize, nothing out the, out the ordinary, some really strong, some okay, the usual drone layer, which we found. And that is kind of sums it all up. It's just absolutely normal. And we're gonna get, I've got to go around all my apries this week, take out the, um, the partitions replace with combs of foundation and try and give them that space and then i'll come back in another week the week after and that's when i start supering because as i said before we work on the fact that supers go on usually the first week of april this year it's even more advanced but we'll be harvesting the same time after we need another two weeks for these colonies to get strong before that nectar flow gets turned on, but it's happened already. So my nukes have been fed. I don't have to feed them. I don't have to worry about them anymore, but my production hives are now going to be absolutely full of nectar very, very quickly. So I've got to go into them. I may be even removing frames of honey again, like I did last year, just to keep them from swarming early. So then that's it. Hives inspected, all good, nothing unusual, but here we go. Take care, bye for now.